When Einstein was old, there was one time when he addressed the question of why it was that a lot of the great discoveries in physics were made by young thinkers, young physicists, young theoreticians, and not by older, more mature ones. And his conclusion was that when you're young, you have lots of time ahead of yourself. You're not afraid of devoting your energies to one line of thought or one particular problem. Whereas when you're older, you don't see that you have much time left. And so there's a fear if I could devote myself to this problem. And it turns out to be a dead end. That's a waste of time, a waste of valuable time, of which there is so little. I don't know if his analysis cor was correct, because a lot of young people can be scattered and distracted, wondering if this life choice will be worth following, or that life choice will be worth following. But it is true that when you don't feel there's much time left, it's hard to pursue any activity for fear that you won't be around to finish it, or won't be worth putting the time in to finish it. I thought of this when someone raised a question a week or two ago. It was a session on aging, illness, and death. We talked about it, helping a person who's about to die think about the good things that he or she has done. And someone objected, why tell other people what to think about while they're dying? Can't you just let them think about whatever they want to? Let them be. Well, letting them be would sound kind if you felt that well, there was nothing for them to do at that point. Everything in life was behind them, so they should be allowed to relax and take the path of least resistance. But even though there may be very little time left in this lifetime, we have to stop and think. The Buddha teaches us that death is not the end, and there's a lot of time after death. That puts things in a different perspective. It's that element of conviction that gives you the strength to keep on doing skillful things, even as you get sick, as you get older, as you're about to die. You realize that every bit of good, right effort is worth it. It pays off. Which is why conviction is listed as one of the strengths. In fact, it's the first strength. The Buddha gives two lists altogether. It's a list of conviction, persistence, mindfulness, concentration, and discernment. That's the standard one in the Wings to Awakening. And there's another one, the strengths of a person in training, conviction, a sense of shame, a healthy sense of shame, compunction, persistence, and discernment. The two lists have conviction, persistence, and discernment in common. And those are the core ones. From them you can extrapolate the other four. When you're convinced that your efforts will be worthwhile, say as you're getting older, you start to think, well, maybe, maybe it's too late for me to expect much in my meditation. I've got a lot of old ingrained habits. Remember, there are people who started meditating at a late point in life and did very well. John Fung had one student. She started meditation after the age of 70 and became quite talented. Part of it was because her illnesses forced her. No medicine was helping her. The medicine of meditation did help her, so she latched on to that and was just very determined to see it through. She realized that even if she died very quickly soon after she started meditating, the fact that she had been meditating would be a useful skill to have. Because after all, when you meditate, you're focused on one thing. 
and you're not letting yourself get distracted. And you're learning to, how to put up with pain and not be bowled over by it, and how not to get all fuzzy and blurred out by pleasure. These are precisely the skills you're going to need as aging comes in and the mind starts wandering around thinking about the past, because you don't like to think about the future. The future doesn't seem to hold much. But you think about all the things in the past, either pleasant things that get you nostalgic, or unpleasant things that fill you with regret. And it's a waste of time. So you need this ability to stay focused and your conviction that you'll need these skills will help keep you motivated to exert right persistence, developing what's skillful, abandoning what's not, and to use your discernment as to what's really important in life. Trying to get a handle on this problem of why the mind keeps doing things that are going to cause itself suffering. And from there you can work out the other strengths. Sense of shame. You think of the noble ones who have gone before us, and you'd be ashamed to let your mind wander away. Complaining about this, nostalgic about that, regretting this. What would they think if they saw you doing that? They'd be concerned, and you'd feel embarrassed. That's a healthy sense of shame, a good one to keep you on, on target. Compunction. Regardless of what other people might think, you realize if you indulge in nostalgia or n indulge in regret, it's going to be bad for you down the line. Now, if you lived in the world of that person who complained earlier, when he said, well, just let people engage in what they want to, because it's not going to make any difference at that point, you're really setting yourself up to engage in a lot of activity that's going to cause suffering. So compunction here goes together with heedfulness. Your actions will have consequences, even as everything is winding down in your life. That doesn't mean things are about to come to an end. It's just the end of a chapter, and then there's another chapter and another chapter. And you want to make sure that those following chapters are headed in the right direction. So you avoid unskillful qualities and develop skillful ones. To do that, you have to be mindful. And when you develop right mindfulness, okay, you get the mind into concentration, and that gets your discernment even sharper. So all of these strengths in both lists can be traced back to conviction that the Buddha was right. We may not know yet, but it's a good working hypothesis. That even old people can accomplish great things. Sick people can accomplish great things. Dying people can accomplish great things. So no matter where you are in your life, You can do something really worthwhile with your time, and you latch onto this, and it's not going to be a dead end. So channel everything you can into the conviction that death is followed by rebirth, and the rebirth is determined by the state of your mind. So focus on the state of your mind. Realize that this is your most valuable possession. The world can be swept away, but you want to make sure you're not swept away with it. It does not endure. But you can find something of an enduring value by holding to this practice, by following this path. to the last breath and beyond.